Hello again. Glad to have you with us again with us another midweek Bible study. And again, let's open with God's word and prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the day. We thank you for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for this time to come again and look at your scripture. Be with us, bless us, enlighten us, Lord, guide us and direct us. Thank you for that cross. And Lord, we pray for this world that's in such turmoil. We certainly pray for our leaders, Lord. We lift up all our leaders, especially that they get saved, God. And if they come to know you as Lord and Savior, they certainly know how to work together and do the things that are best for this country and this people of this nation. But Lord, we love you. We thank you for the cross. And may we never get over it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> today we are in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. And uh, today it's about scoffers in the last days. Uh, the coming of, of, of uh, again, of Jesus Christ and the end of the world. Uh, this is the subject of this final section of uh, the book of 2 Peter. Uh, this is a subject that literally fascinates tens of thousands of people. But note, fascination is not what God is after uh, in discussing the return of Jesus, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the end of the world. What, what, is, what is God after? Uh, uh, for man to prepare his heart to receive his Son. God wants people to know his Son. Man must be ready to, for the return of Christ. And so this passage covers the crucial subject. The first thing to know uh, is scoffers shall come. Uh, is what it's about here, though. So let's look at the verses 1 through uh, seven, it says, This epistle, beloved, this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up you, uh, your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of the coming? For since the fathers fall asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that which by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Whereby the world that was being overflowed with water perished. But it, the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word as kept in store, reserved unto fire again, the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Again, let's pray. Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for the word. And just Lord, again, bless us. Help us to understand the scripture and uh, just enlighten us. Help us to grow, to be more like you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. My first point here is this. As we look at verses 1 through 2, it says here to arouse your minds, arouse your pure mind. Uh, arouse is so that you can remember. Uh, if a person is to know and understand the true return of Christ, his mind has to be aroused. Uh, the mind cannot be lazy or, or wandering. We've got to be ready for that return. Uh, it has to be watching, alert, and focused, concentrating, and actively engaged upon basically two things. First, the mind must remember the words spoken by the prophets. <clears throat> As it says here in the scripture, they had much to say about the returning of, of Christ uh, to earth. Uh, second, the mind must remember the commands of the, of the Lord that have been preached and taught by, uh, by the apostles, by the preachers down through the centuries. Jesus Christ taught much about his return. He talked about it. Uh, the apostles in, in turn uh, shared his teachings uh, with their people. So down through the ages, it's been passed on. So the importance of mind being aroused cannot be overexpressed. <coughs> Excuse me. Peter drives home this point. Stir up your minds, your pure minds. Uh, be mindful. Know this first. Do not be ignorant of the, of the one thing. Uh, so look again, he's, he's talking for us to really focus upon uh, uh, the word of God and to remember the word of God. And that phrase pure mind means to have a clear and pure, unmixed, uncontaminated focus and to uh, concentrate in mind. We are not to let our minds be contaminated by things that are of the word of God. It is the picture of thoughts being sifted just like that of, uh, of sifting in order to uh, separate the, the, the chaff from wheat. Uh, thoughts are to be shifted in order to separate the true and pure from the untrue and the unpure. So the mind must be pure and clear. It is to grasp uh, the great truth of the return of Christ to earth. 
So the stress is upon the mind, a pure and clear mind, a mind uh, that is focused uh, and learning and remembering what it was or what it has been taught. Also note uh, another fact that in these uh, two verses here uh, is the unity of scripture. The prophets of the Old Testament and the words of Jesus Christ and the preaching and teaching of the apostles are all lined together and put all in an equal footing. They are all considered to be alternative, uh, 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 to be authoritative, not alternative, excuse me, authoritative, though, to be the word of God. So they are. It is the word of God. We can trust this. Also, we see in verse 3 that uh, uh, known that scoffers shall come in the last days. In other words, it's going to get worse in the last days. Uh, the first coming of Jesus to earth uh, was the uh, pivotal point of human history. Jesus came in, in the fullness of time, and Jesus came in the last uh, uh, times for you. And, uh, <clears throat> and, and God has in the last days spoken unto us by his Son. And John the Apostle says, it is the last time. Since Jesus came first, or since Jesus Christ first came to earth, history is in its last stages now. Right now, the time between Christ's first coming and his second coming is, is what we call it in this time the, the age of grace, the age when God's mercy and grace are flowing out of the world through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the things to remember is that the, this period of history is called the last times, the last days, the, uh, these last days, according to Hebrews, and the last time, according to 1 John chapter 2. John's term for the last or the end time, the last time, <coughs> the Greek really means the last hour, the last or, or the midnight hour when the world is to end. But know this, the end times does not mean annihilation. It, uh, it does not mean that everything will cease to exist. In biblical thought, the last time is in the end of one age and the beginning of another. It is not only a time of ending, it is also a time of new beginning. It is a time in the sense that things uh, as they are passing away, but leads not to a uh, world of uh, ob uh, 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 obliteration, uh, but world recreation. In other words, the final chapter of human history is now being written. So Jesus Christ will return to earth and time will be no more. We, we are to look for his return every day. We are to be prepared for that return any moment. And I'm looking forward to it. And I, I hope you are. And when he returns, not only will he, the earth and heaven be destroyed and pass away, but they will recreate a new universe. There will be both a new heaven and a new earth. The new universe will be the home of all those who have followed Christ Jesus. So this then is the message that we must heed is the last days, the end times, the destruction of the world uh, as we know it is coming. Uh, it's it not a, a, a message of gloom, though. It is a message of hope because I, I'm looking for that time. It is my hope, that new world. There is a new world coming that will be a glorious, perfected, not corruption, no evil, sin, and death, only glory and splendor, health and life, and it will last forever and ever. World without end. But note the point. There are scoffers in these last days, people who scoff at the ideal of Christ coming back, of there being a new world, of this world being annihilated, <coughs> uh, and a new world to come. They scoff at it. Verse 3, uh, scoffers walk after their own lust. They live like they want and do their own thing. They want the possessions and the pleasures of this world. And that's one of the reasons they scoff. They don't want to believe uh, that there's a God that, that we must submit our lives to. They want to live like they want to. They want the money and the, the lands and the furnishings and the popularity and the possessions and the authority. They want all that stuff. They, they want the right to enjoy all the pleasures they feel safe doing such as, as partying and drinking and eating and indulging. You know, they don't have a problem with cussing and carrying on wine because they don't believe in that afterlife stuff. They don't believe in the new world to come. These are the mockers, the people who walk after their own lust. They have to mock and reject the second coming of Christ. If they accept it, then they have to change their lives. They have to, they have to admit that the way they're living and the life that they've chosen to live is terrible and horrible and that there's eternal judgment. They don't want to admit that. They're unwilling to change their lives. And so therefore they reject Christ Jesus and they reject the fact or the thought of him returning. And the Bible tells us in Galatians 5, 19 through 21, it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, 
adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have told you, also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So they don't want to believe that there is another life. They don't want to believe that Christ is coming back because they don't want to believe that there's a judgment. Also, verse 4, scoffers ridicule the return of Christ, Jesus Christ. They scoff because it has, it's been a thousand years. But we know, according to the word of God, a thousand years to the Lord is, you know, is like one day. But they scoff. They ask questions. Where is the promise of Christ's return? What has happened to his promise? It has been thousands of years since he first came. And Christians have always been proclaiming that, that he's coming soon. He's coming any day. Even today you are declaring uh, that he is coming soon. Declaring that he's coming is just around the corner. Declaring that everyone must accept his return. And, and, and what has, uh, has happened. Uh, where is he? They're asking. If he is coming back to earth he would have surely returned by now that's their thought <coughs> there are those who even argue that there's no such thing as suffering and evil in the world Christ would have certainly returned by now if he was going to he would have returned and brought peace in other words in other words they're saying there's so much suffering there's so much evil because of that if truly there was a Christ, if truly there was a God, he would have done come back and straighten all that. He wouldn't allow all that to happen. But God gives us freedom to choose how we live and the things we do. And there's people who choose to be evil and corrupt. So the first argument of the scoffers is based upon the teaching that the second coming is false. They feel that Christ would have returned long ago if the teachings were true. And the fact that he has not returned proves that their teaching of the second coming is not true, that Christ is not going to return, uh, that he's not real, there's not a, sec, there's not a, 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 a hereafter life. Uh, so a person can therefore forget the doctrines, go ahead and live like they want to, live like or life as they wish. The Bible says in Matthew 27 and 36, or chapter 24, 27 and 36, For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even into the west, so shall also the coming of the Lord of the coming of the Son of Man be. But of that day and hour of Noah, no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. He's coming. We don't know when. All the signs are pointing to very soon, very soon. But they scoff because the world continues just as it is. They argue there has never been a change in the world's operations. There has always, there's not been a change. Everything is running the same. This second argument is based upon the stability of the universe, its laws, upon the fact that uh, the laws of nature run the, uh, run the world and keep it stable and functioning. The laws of nature have kept the universe uh, running on and on without any major convulsive events. Therefore, their argument why they shall people get excited and become concerned about the world ending. They're, they're saying it's, it's always been this way. It's going to continue. Nothing's going to change. The law of nature runs the universe, not an imaginary God. Nothing has ever changed the world. The world has been going on millions of years. In fact, it has been continuing on for thousands of years since Christ came. Why then get concerned about his change? That's their argument. But we also see in verses 5 and 7, scoffers are ignorant of three facts. And note, Scripture says that they are willingly ignorant willingly they choose to ignore to be unreasonable and to reject the fact that god is the creator and sustainer of the world scripture declares that the world is not self-creating and self-sufficient it has not been made by the law of nature and it does not run and operate itself by the law of nature the law uh, the uh, the heavens and the earth were created by god and by his word he spoke the word and they were created. And I want you to know they're run by him. He governs the law of nature. It was God. He spake the world into existence who created the universe and the laws of nature. So the heavens and the earth were created by God simply speaking and bringing them to being. God is God, the supreme intelligence and power. Therefore, God can simply and will and speak. And his word creates whatever he wills. 
The point is this. Mockers will only choose to ignore and reject God to deny God's absolute intelligence and power. Therefore, they are willingly ignorant that God created the world and that, that he sustains it by the mere power of his word. The world and its laws are, are existing today only because God keeps them existing today. The only reason Jesus has not yet returned to the earth is because it is not yet time. God's time. God is not yet ready for Christ to return. And when God, uh, God's day arrives, God will simply speak the word and Christ will come back again. And the final chapter of history, human history, will be then closed. Scripture tells us there. In verse 6, Scripture declares that the world has not always continued on its presently does. Look what it says in verse 6 there in verse 3. <clears throat> Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. The idea that the worldwide convulsive event did not happen is totally false. The earth has perished before God spoke the word and judged the world. His words destroyed the world with a flood and all life Except for one family, eight people. God did not let people go on and on in their sin as it was. They were so corrupt. God brought judgment and God brought punishment to sinners. And he's going to do it again. They willfully ignored and rejected the facts about the flood that destroyed the bones and the imprint of the bones of the sea life can be found all over the dry land of the earth. Yet men continue to reject even though their science proves this catastrophic event that happened by God long, long ago. So the point is this, the world was destroyed by God's word once. It can therefore be destroyed by God's word again. In fact, it's going to be. In fact, the only reason the world has not yet been destroyed is that it is not God's time to destroy. And God is waiting for more and more people to come to him to accept him as Lord and Savior. But the scriptures are clear. God has spoken. Jesus Christ is going to return to the world and the world is going to be judged and it's going to be destroyed again. Verse 7. Scripture declares that the heavens and the earth are being kept, reserved, and stored up for destruction by fire. Oh my. How? By God's word. God is controlling the heavens and the earth. They have not yet been destroyed because God has not yet spoken the word. But know this, he is keeping and reserving, storing up the world for destruction by fire. Why? Because of ungodly men. As stated, this is a moral universe and God expects men to live moral and pure lives. But there's so much sin today. There's so much hate today. It's unreal. But the day of judgment and perdition, in other words, destruction, is coming because men have chosen to live. <coughs> Excuse me. Men have been chosen to live ungodly lives. It is this that man and, and mockers have chosen to ignore and reject. They are accountable to loving. Uh, they don't want to be accountable to their, uh, to their loving and their, and their and, uh, holy God. They, they, they refuse to believe that he exists. It is this that they refuse to study and know and submit to. So therefore they continue on in their selfish and their hoarding and their pleasures and their unjust, their evil, their immoral ways. And they continue to scoff at the coming again of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to judge the earth. They better get ready. If they would read the word of God and they would look at what's happening in our world, they can see themselves and judge for themselves that he's fixing to come. Hebrews 9, 27 says, And it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. Judgment is coming. It's coming. And people better be ready. I'm looking for the Lord to split those eastern skies any day. Friend, I hope you're ready. I hope you can see the signs. I hope you understand that you must be prepared, that you must not believe these scoffers, and you must not sell out to the ways and the things of this world, but sell out to God. Be a living sacrifice for the Lord and lead others to Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you again for this time of study together. <clears throat> we thank you for your word. And Lord, I pray, Father, that you would just bless those out who are listening to this message today. Heal our land, Lord. Heal our land. We need it so bad, God. We just love you. We thank you for the cross. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the week.